We're glad you're here. We have more information. There have been a few changes and updates. I'd like to call on first John Coelho with the weather report. Mr. Coelho. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the latest on Irma as of 2 o'clock, it's still a Category 4 hurricane with wind speeds of 155 miles per hour, and it's currently passing between the central Bahamas and Cuba. Irma will continue to track west-northwest as a major hurricane through Saturday. Irma is forecast to turn northward Saturday night, then make a potential landfall in southern Florida late Sunday night or uh, excuse me, late Saturday night or early Sunday. The forecast has shifted westward since this time yesterday, with the official track taking it northward across the Florida Peninsula through early Monday. This interaction with land will cause Irma to weaken as it lifts northward toward the area. Irma is then expected to move northwest across Georgia Monday and Monday night. While this track will bring less significant impacts to the state, there are a few things to remember. One, the wind fields will become larger as the storm lifts north, and the impacts from the storm extend a great distance from the center. The heaviest rain and highest threat for tornadoes is on the right side of the track. Any shift to the east, which is certainly possible as the storm is still three days out, would bring much greater impacts to the area. In terms of impacts, uh, even with the track, storm surge inundation of low-lying coastal areas is likely along central and southern portions of the South Carolina coast due to persistent strong onshore winds and higher than normal tide levels. In fact, coastal flooding is already occurring in some parts of the low country. If the storm were to track farther east than currently forecast, which is a possibility, storm surge flooding could be significant. We will continue to work with the Hurricane Center throughout the day to refine the storm surge forecast, which is potentially one of the greatest impacts we can see. We should also mention the tropical storm force wind gust, potentially strong enough to cause scattered damage to trees and power lines, could occur throughout the state. The best chances for the strongest winds are south and west of Interstate 26. These winds will also likely result in some power outages. Significant amounts of rainfall are possible, which could lead to localized flash flooding, and minor to moderate river flooding is also a concern toward the middle and latter part of next week. So uh, we ask everyone not to let your guard down with the latest change to the forecast. Significant impacts could still occur across the state, and it's important to follow the advice of local emergency management officials. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions about the weather, the weather report or predictions? Any, any height in terms of storm surge is possible? We're going to work with the Hurricane Center today to try to refine some numbers and be able to give you a little more detail this afternoon. But with the, the track of the storms to the west, we're still concerned that we could see some storm surge flooding, and we already have higher than normal tides right now causing issues. So we want to refine those numbers some before we... Where is that flooding occurring now? Uh, I believe along portions, uh, portions of the Charleston County coast. I, I heard of some reports of uh, homes potentially being undermined from the rising water levels there. Um, normal flood prone locations, but right now there are already some strong winds pushing those water levels a little bit higher than normal. With the release of water from the dams upstream, is that also causing the inundation problem? Is it, is it affecting it at all? No, that's not impacting the uh, inundation that we're seeing along the coast. That's just due to the onshore winds and the higher than normal tides. Uh, any release on the dams would have an effect on the rivers, but right now we're not expecting anything to get really above mind or moderate flood levels on, on the area rivers. But the two joining at the coast, isn't that isn't contributing at all? No, it shouldn't be a factor. By undermining houses, what he means is the water is under the houses. It's, it's reaching the homes. And some of the spots that typically experience flooding when we have higher than normal tides. So, um, but we are already seeing that, and we expect conditions to only worsen as we head through the weekend, especially by Monday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, briefly, the Team South Carolina has already been introduced to everyone, and of course uh, we are... We're still doing, and we're in the same status as we were yesterday. That is, that, number one, there are a lot of additional vehicles on the South Carolina highways, uh, particularly I-95. As you know, this hurricane is coming up through Florida and Georgia, and with its uh, apparent turning to the, to the west, that means Georgians are not going to the west, but they're going, turning more towards the north and the east, which brings them right up I-95. So there's going to be a lot of extra traffic. Uh, in, on South Carolina roads, uh, highways yesterday, there were about 27,000 extra vehicles, more than normal. And today, there are about 65,000 extra vehicles, more than normal.
and there's a lot of traffic and what we urge uh, South Carolinians and others to do if, if you don't need to get on that highway don't need to get on these big highways that the that these pass through visitors would normally take uh, try to do that go go another way and let's try to relieve some of that traffic so they can get on through as quickly as possible also the Department of Social Services and Red Cross have 52 shelters available in 12 counties these these are uh, 45,350 capacity there for evacuees. We have 2,400 National Guardsmen on duty to assist in the evacuation, as we stated yesterday. Also, as stated yesterday, we have 2,358 state and local law enforcement officers on duty for the evacuation. Also, we have 432 SLED, DNR, and probation, pardon, and parole agents assigned to assist local law enforcement right now. So the, the whole team is out there. They've been mobilized. They're ready for what comes next. The decision has been made by the Team South Carolina professionals to ensure the safety of South, every South Carolinian, everything that we announcing or doing is based on a lot of information, all the most available and best, most reliable information. For that reason, we are delaying the final decision on evacuation orders until after we receive more information about the hurricane at five o'clock this afternoon. That's when we'll get another full comprehensive report on the hurricane from the National Hurricane Center and uh, sometime around six o'clock or so we hope to be able to make a, an announcement about evacuations. But I need to say and need to make it clear if we had to evacuate the whole coast starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow as we are prepared to do, we are prepared to do it. No one is leaving, everyone is, is still at their post and those plans have not changed at all to be prepared for that eventuality. There are a couple of things that have changed somewhat. One is about school closings. I mentioned yesterday that we would have to consider a statewide order closing schools in South Carolina. We do not think we need to do that now, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. The decision on school closings will to continue to be made by the school districts themselves. Many school districts along the coast have already made their closing decisions. Also, in the same theme, the state government offices, it's true as well, the state government offices will follow the, this closing policy. That is, the policy is to close when and if the county government where the office is located decides to close. That's for the state offices. In the question of the health care facilities, based on new information, I have rescinded the portion of the executive order issued yesterday that required the mandatory evacuation of health care facilities for some of the counties. Not all, but some. I have rescinded the portion of that executive order requiring the mandatory evacuation of the health care facilities in these counties. Ori, Georgetown, Berkeley, Charleston, and Dorchester. Again, it is rescinded as to the health care facilities in Ori, Charleston, Berkeley, excuse me, Ori, Georgetown, Berkeley, Charleston, and Dorchester. It remains in full force and effect as to the others in that executive order, and those are Beaufort, Colleton, and Jasper counties are still under the evacuation order for the health care facilities. What are health care facilities? They are hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, alcohol and substance abuse hospitals, and similar types that are listed in the executive order. Further, I have directed Secretary of Department of Transportation, Christy Hall, to immediately suspend the tolls, that is the fees, for the Cross Island Parkway that's located on Hilton Head Island. I mentioned earlier we're going to have a lot of Floridians and probably Georgians as well joining us over this, this weekend, so let's be good, good hosts and let's also uh, be careful, uh, men and women of South Carolina, if you don't need the gas in your vehicle, don't get it. Uh, we don't want to start a run on these filling stations. There are reports here and there of, of people 
of filling stations selling as much gas in one day as normally they would in a week. It's, it's just not necessary to do that. You don't need to keep your vehicle filled up right to the brim. You don't need to top it off every day. Just keep a, a decent supply of gas in there and we'll be all right. And there'll be plenty of gas for those people coming through that will need to gas up somewhere in South Carolina to keep on moving to their ultimate destination. That's all we have for right now. And now I'd like to call on Christy Hall, Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor mentioned, we are seeing increased traffic flows through the state. We reported yesterday about 27,000 uh, additional traffic loads on our highways. Uh, that number has increased by an additional 65,000 as of today. So we're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, more than 92,000 additional vehicles traveling across our interstates in the South Carolina. There are po pockets of congestion across the state. I-95 sections of I-26 are congested as well as US-321. Traffic is heavy, however, it is moving. We have deployed our state highway emergency patrol, our ship units, as well as our maintenance units, and highway patrol is assisting as well on those routes to help keep traffic moving. And we've moved to 24-hour operations along those routes to make sure the traffic continues to move. Our rest areas and welcome centers are also operating at 24-hour capacity. And as the governor mentioned, when and if uh, there's movement out of the areas, make sure you plan ahead. I encourage you to sign up for our 511 app if you don't already have it. It has real-time traffic data that's available to the public. And our call center at 1-855-GO-SCDOT. That's 1-855-467-2368 is available to assist any motorist uh, make travel arrangements. Thank you, Governor. Director Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. As the governor stated earlier, we are still in position to um, uh, implement lane reversals in all three uh, region evacua evacuation zones should the need arise. Uh, we've heard about the influx of traffic here in our state from out-of-state uh, travelers. So we have uh, uh, instituted line patrols, uh, putting our troopers on the uh, interstates, whether it's 95, I-26, and your major uh, highways uh, to help uh, uh, manage that traffic. We've also uh, 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 staffing some of the traffic control points uh, to help, uh, again, manage that uh, the traffic. Uh, working with some of our law enforcement partners. I uh, could not overstate the importance of uh, uh, the clearance of our roadways, so we focus on quick clearance of collisions and disabled vehicles to get those vehicles off the road as quickly as possible, partnering with the South Carolina National Guard. Uh, we are utilizing their records to clear uh, the uh, roadways expeditiously should uh, those vehicles obstruct the uh, normal flow uh, of traffic. And just, just on a final note, uh, uh, since we have a lot of uh, out-of-state travelers in our state, I uh, just would like to remind the motoring public uh, two things. Number one, uh, please move over for uh, emergency vehicles, uh, for we'll be responding to different types of calls for service. Uh, and the second point, if, if you're involved in a minor collision, uh, please move the vehicle uh, from the roadway. It keeps the uh, traffic uh, flowing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson here from DHEC. Yes, sir. If you please. Um, we have been moving forward with evaluating any requests for waivers uh, for the medical emergency uh, evacuation order. Uh, currently for the remaining counties that are in the uh, order as it exists now, uh, the three hospitals have requested uh, a waiver request. We're in the process of evaluating those at this point. General? Oh, we're good to go. He's good to go. <laughs> Sir, I'll just say Simpson. Just, just say one thing is uh, in the personal preparedness area, uh, still a good resource is our hurricane guide, which is available on our website. It's got a lot of preparedness tips as you might prepare for evacuation. Uh, and our website itself, scmd.org, has a wealth of information there. So I highly recommend you go there. It's got know your zone information. You can type in your address, find out if you're in a zone. If I could ask you about the shelters real quick, are they still in a prepared in a state, can you staff them all up quickly? Is, is that process like the road still viable? Yes, sir. That's, that's still all ready to, to launch if the evacuation order is given. All of them or with the schools going back to school, is that, did, would that change your plan? Well, this, 
proposed evacuation time right now is maybe Saturday, and schools are closed, so we shouldn't have any problems at all in opening those, uh, the ones that the governor just talked about. Okay. Governor, tell us about what you're weighing personally in terms of to evacuate or not to evacuate. Uh, how do, does traffic from the other states factor in? How does maybe anger at being evacuated over potentially not needing to? What do you well, those are the kind of questions that come up every time we have a storm. People don't like to leave their homes and businesses, and as little as they like leaving them, uh, they want to get back to them immediately. And actually, there's there's a lot more concern and disruption in trying to get back than there is in, in getting out. It's slow to get out, but often to get back in. Of course, you can't get back in until the evacuation orders has been lifted. And people often don't understand that although it, it may look clear, it, it, it's not because you have trees down, you have electrical lines down, you have all sorts of problems that uh, the that we don't want to exacerbate by having people driving down the roads and going into their homes. So uh, we have, as I've said before, we, we have a, a team of, of real professionals that uh, fortunately or unfortunately have had a lot of recent experience with these kind of things, both with a flood and a hurricane. And uh, we are we are as prepared as, as we as we can be, but it's always a question of the safety of the people. That's always the question, and, and some sometimes there, there's a little bit of inconvenience involved with uh, being sure that you're being safe. Yes, ma'am. Governor, you mentioned that there were some shelters open in 12 counties, correct? That are on standby to open in 12 counties. That's right. Uh, what which counties are those? Those are the ones sort of in the middle of the state. I don't have my list. They're, they're not in the low country. They're on outside of the zone of, of danger and the high water and all that. We, we can provide that information. Let me, let me mention this also. We don't have the blue hurricane sign today. We still ask everyone to be sure and follow those signs uh, upon evacuation, upon evacuation, uh, if and when we have evacuation. Uh, follow those signs and, and don't don't go by Google, don't go by social media. Follow those signs and, and follow the, the official sources because there's a lot of, you ought to see all the people that are just in this building, not to mention those on the team around in the counties who are collaborating and sharing information to come up with the very best information that we have. So everybody take a look at those signs and follow them. <laughs> Governor, when yes, does the sir. timeline for evacuations, that sort of thing, start changing? Can you give us kind of a... It hadn't changed yet. Well, when did it, we start looking at the possibility of this not being well, what we were thinking? Well, we it has never changed. We've said from the beginning, and everyone has been watching the same weather maps. Maybe we have a few more access than, than the average citizen, but we've been watching them assiduously. Uh, with teams of professionals all over and it you never know where a hurricane is going to go this one has taken appears on the uh, Trajectory that it is on now to be headed a little more to the west than we thought but uh, We could wake up in the morning. It could have doubled back on us for all we know That's why as, as we mentioned earlier. We, we still have we are still mobilized We still have the law enforcement the emergency people the National Guard everyone is still in place We haven't budged Depending on how far that... What advice would you give to families who are um, evacuating to this area with pets? I know a lot of shelters don't allow families with pets, and a lot of hotels don't. So what advice would you give to those families? That's why you have to plan ahead. That, that's why we, uh, we're urging people to uh, make telephone calls, find out which uh, places do allow pets, which don't. Be sure to, uh, to, to understand that you may not be going home for uh, an indefinite period. We don't know when it's going to be, and... We don't want to add to the, the problem by having uh, people with pets that don't have the medicine or don't have the right food or whatever they need. So it's a, uh, every individual is going to have to do that. There, there are messages and things on, on television and various sources that, uh, that have information about where, where pets may, may go in some hotels and things. But uh, that's, that's something the individual is going to have to do. But the main thing to do is just understand you have to make those decisions, make those preparations, and go on and get it done now while we've got, got some time. If there's some concern that with the Floridians and Georgians moving north that um, if we wait to call for an evacuation, it may make a standstill on the roads? No, ma'am, we don't believe so. Uh, the, we're watching this very closely, 
and the ex the um, routes for getting away from the coast are clearly marked and we will have signs and messing messaging that can be changed and uh, tailor-made in an instant to try to get the flow of traffic to go here or to go there to prevent exactly what you you're saying but what we urge everybody to understand right now is and until we say otherwise they should they should plan on and up for an evacuation order tomorrow at 10 o'clock and that's what that's been our position all along now we may change that but they, they should they should not change their preparations until we change our announcements on that. Are the lane reversals on I-26 and uh, I-95 dependent on the evacuation orders? Yes. Or could they, I mean, could there be lane reversals without evacuation no. orders? Depending on the track of the storm, is there a possibility uh, at least some parts of the state won't have to evacuate? Possibility. Do you have advice for those people to stay safe in their homes if they're not required to evacuate? If I would urge everyone to use caution and they need to protect themselves and as it stands now we're urging them to be prepared for an evacuation order at 10 o'clock in the morning and that may change at 6 o'clock this evening when we get information after 5 o'clock this evening when from the, the full uh, weather uh, predictions and reports and more details. But as from now, just, just as the our mobilized professionals, law enforcement, National Guard, and the others I mentioned, they're, they're still on duty and on, they're on the scene. Uh, everyone else should take that same kind of precaution. And where can people park their cars at higher ground? Will there be garages made available? Ma'am, uh, that, that's one you, that people will have to make preparations for, but we know one thing for sure. Uh, the ground is higher the farther you get away from the coast. So get away from the coast. Are there any areas in the state, uh, like Myrtle Beach, for example, where you can take evacuations off the table at this point? We're not taking anything off the table at this point except for the mandatory evacuations of the, those uh, health care uh, facilities. And that's in not in not all of them they are in some counties but we're remaining in jasper beaufort and colleton they are still under the evacuation you mentioned uh people didn't need to go fill up their cars with gas um are you concerned about a shortage in the state i am concerned about spot shortages due to uh, a, a panic I mean, we we've been through these things before you got to be reasonable you don't need a, a full tank of gas uh, if uh, a half a tank will, will get you all the way to Spartanburg. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming. We'll have more later today.